First and foremost, Dane, I want to say congratulations on a beautiful, beautiful baby girl that you had not a couple of days ago. I'm not good with math. 40, 48 hours. She is brand spanking new to this clown show we call the world. And uh, we're going to do our level best as a family to make sure that she doesn't go insane like everybody else. We? Well, that's what I said as a family. My, my job is to do the exact opposite. I'm going to well, bring her down to my level and we'll have fun, rollicking adventures. As here. a founding member of the sane space, you the, cannot lead her into insanity. That would be But it's so much more fun for us crazies. I guess it depends like you, on the you type You make of your insanity. own fun in this world, is all I'll say. You make your own fun in this I, world. I guess it depends on the type. But I do have insanity. one quick um, PSA. Yes. Uh, your nipple health. How are they doing? Mm-hmm. Are they sore? Fantastic. I have I have cream um, that I, I put on them every time because, you know, I am trying to outpace my biology and front run my gender and breastfeed her. And uh, I got to admit, it's not going well right now, but all the You're lactation. The you lactation, see the specialist yet? You the see lactation it? consultants say stick with it. Is she latching? It will come. Will she latch? She is latching. Okay, that's yes. good. That's Hey, listen, it's half the battle right there from what I hear. <laughs> Now, will you pump like six months down the road? Um, I will. Yes. As long as I can to keep her off that uh, pharmaceutical grade uh, formula, which is pumped full of lead crash, and trash. Yeah. Red dye yeah. number 40. And you know, the only thing I'm thinking about as we're having this conversation is that episode of Family Guy where, where Peter tries to Picks make the steroids. Hair out of his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Peter picks. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I like that we're forward thinking in this family. That's right. And that if men can get pregnant, we can nurse too, you know? Exactly. Just slap a titty in your little newborn's mouth and let her at least suckle. You heard it here first. Listen, if she starves to death because she wasn't able to get any milk from me, that just means that you're a bigot. She was transphobic. Absolutely. And would not accept your milk. She. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway. On to the less important details. Uh, <laughs> meme destruction this week. SpaceX setback and the libs are dancing in the streets. I mean, you know, nothing like losers rejoicing over the, uh, I'm not even going to say failure, just the, what, 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 what would we call that? The, uh, um, I mean, that I mission guess, was a failure. Yeah, let's call it failure. I guess that the quarterback beats you up in the hallway every day and he throws an interception. Yeah, you, you're <laughs> going to be the only person cheering in the fucking crowd. <laughs> that is People true. People are going to go, what the hell is that guy's from? He stuffed me in a locker and gave me a wedgie. Yeah, anyway. but the, the question beg there is, did you deserve to get beat up? Well. Like, were you just a general scumbag? Come on, clear cell kids. Yeah. Lube up. Anyway. Anyway. More on that later. There's a running theme in this. Let's see if they can pick it up. They're They're smart, intuitive, and... Gentle folk. I'm sure they'll they'll get the gist. Uh, Culture Corner. Uh, Biden's first homeowner price hike. Thanks, Joe. Yep. As if life wasn't difficult enough, Joe is telling you to hold 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 his beer. Right when you're about to get ahead, they go and change the game. Epstein didn't kill himself. Trudeau and Fauci both doing the COVID nineteen moonwalk. Let's see if they do it elegantly. Hmm. With elegance, yes. Nice. Nice pull. All right. Main topic, and you'll never guess what this is. The life in memoriam of the Tucker Carlson Tonight program. Let's pour one out for the homie. I I've, I don't have an open kombucha, so I'll sip one for well, the homie. Yeah, I have a cup of water. Okay. I'm sure we'll be there soon. It's very refreshing. You ready to go, Dave? <laughs> I'm sure we will. All right. If we're not already. Welcome to Weapons and Meme Destruction Podcast, episode 143, which can be found at wmdpodcast.com backslash 143. You can get the audio only on any podcast catcher. Just search Weapons of Meme Destruction. You can get the video on YouTube, Rumble, uh, and Odyssey, although we are talking about the no-no C word in one segment of this uh, this particular episode. I think 
we can uh, tiptoe around the edges enough to keep this one up on YouTube, but we'll see. Um, you can also link up with us on our non-podcast socials, TikTok, Instagram, um, Facebook, the members only Facebook page. You can get in there by supporting the show at $5 a month. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter, Float, and what am I missing? Tribell. Anything else? I was going to remind you if you're pretty sure that's it. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I'm running on very little sleep, uh, as you can probably imagine. 30 minutes, Dane? 30 minutes. Oh, yes. 30 minutes. This episode is going to be 30 minutes. 30 minutes. All right. We're already like five in, but 30 minutes. You heard it here last. Um, So with that being said, maybe without further ado, we should just jump straight into the show. Unless you had... Anything else? You got to pump before they fill up. I'm telling you. I, I you got. I hear it's really uncomfortable. It's painful if it yeah. does. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, jumping into this week's episode in the uh, meme segment, the meme we're destroying is from repeat meme offenders. The other 98 percent, the Facebook page, the Twitter, no matter how many socials they have, all of their posts are equally as stupid. Um, and this one is a picture. Of and I forget the name. I saw it at the at the time when there was a headline. But one of Elon's rockets uh, took off and launched, and then shortly after launch, it exploded for a you know lack of a better term mission failure. Was and it manned or unmanned? I believe it was unmanned. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if it was manned, we we would it would have been a much bigger story. Yeah. As it is, it just turned out to be a lefty musing because don't you know it is the cool. Th- happening thing of today to make sure that you hate Elon and express it as often as you possibly Clearly can. Clearly a Nazi. Yeah. So um, anyway, the the other 98% posted, which you can see right here, uh, posted a picture uh, shortly after the rocket had exploded with the text that said, quote, I want Elon in charge of sending billionaires to space, double exclamation points. Um, and, you know, my first thought when I saw that was, this guy, and it was reported, I think it was somewhere around like a $3 billion rocket or whatever. And my first thought is like, God, you people suck. You know, whether it be Elon or whether I know, listen, Elon's not a saint. He does take government subsidies for some of his SpaceX operations and Tesla and stuff like that. I don't know how much of this particular rocket was subsidized by the government, but the period full stop into this whole thing is that not wasted because you know you even learn from your failures so hopefully it doesn't happen in the future hopefully but they don't that's all three cost billion dollars up yeah. in flame yeah right so no matter whose pocket it came out of that's unfortunate that I might don't have like- saved us the fourteen thousand that we're about to get to the <laughs> in the next segment It'd yeah been pretty fucking cool if we well, didn't have to do that it but, would have know. been special tacular if that would have happened Shit. but um you know whether that three billion came out of Elon's pocket or came out of taxpayer subsidies or whether it came out of you know rich wealthy investors doesn't matter. You know we don't like to just see wanton destruction of resources um, because that's just not a good. Like why would we celebrate that? You know what's funny too is the, the he's been been very clear over the past however long he's been trying to do this that his whole thing is like. The proflag- profligation? profligation of the human the species. The proliferation. Is that, of, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The proliferation of the species by inhabiting another planet and spreading our democracy. Um, so really, they're dancing in the streets for a setback, not just for Elon, but for humanity. And it's funny how often that's really what they're dancing about. Because we got a whole, he got a hold of Twitter and that's really what rattled their cages. Yeah. And that's when he became, oh, Elon. Because remember, they used to they used to fan his nuts for him. They loved him because he, you know, Tesla was Tesla. super green. And they were gonna save the environment, yada, yada, yada. Never mind the cobalt mining. We can forgive that. Steve and Jobs he is it. not, he doesn't claim this himself, but according to the brain dead lefties, uh, Elon is not at the very bottom of the oppression Olympics totem pole, although he is a straight white male. uh, I believe he is on the autism spectrum. So he is quote unquote special needs. So we should support him for that. Um, But no, all of that goes out the window if you are not ideologically ensconced in whatever they say is the correct moral position. Ensconced, great word, great word. But all I was gonna say is that when he bought Twitter, he bought it for the reason of supplying us with an actual social media platform with free speech protected on it. 
and uh, it seemed like he was taking a step forward for the good of our country. But now, when he did that, they lost their minds. He became persona non grata, and what a Nazi he was probably in league with. Yeah, you know, he was, the, he, was the, he was the he was the second gunman on the grassy knoll. Uh, he's the reason that we have cancer. Yeah. Did you know that? I Elon, did know that. Elon did not exist for cancer. Elon. Yep. Right. Exactly. So it's a tough world. Tough it world. Is. It is. And, you know, other than those surface level observations, when thinking about this a little bit longer, we're like, you know, does it, do you remember that like kid in the back of class who was a little bit weird, not that high achieving, um, but didn't really, I guess, lack of social awareness to understand that the reason why they didn't have friends was not because everybody around them was mean to them, because there were those kids as well. I'm talking about the other group of weird loner kids that nobody wanted to be friends with them because every time a, the rare person tried to approach them and say, hey, buddy, you know, come on into my circle. You know, you don't got to sit alone, whatever. They would just push people away either intentionally or unintentionally because they were just those just lacking social skills and grace and they were just terrible people to be around. Um, that's what these people are. They grew up, they became adults and they started a page called the other 98% and they got a few hundred thousand of their buddies to uh, laugh at their non Dude, this literally happened to me. Um, I think I was like six or seven mm -hmm. and I had a like a friend over and I was going to put on a movie and it was PG-13. Yeah. And he said that he didn't want to watch it because his parents didn't let him. I was like, come on, dude. You're, they're not here. Let's be, ch <laughs> let's be chill. <laughs> let's just be cool, dog. Yeah. He, he ran out of my room and told my mom that we were about to watch a movie that he's not allowed to watch. He told on me to my own mom against <laughs> me. Did your mom stop the movie? He's like, she came back and said, David, I don't think he wants to watch the movie. I was like, oh, for God's sake. Yeah, needless to say, he wasn't invited over again. Right. So it's like you made your bed when he and he didn't fare well, and I think you moved to another school and probably proliferated his right. goddamn weirdness over there. Second time I've used pro proliferated. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna try to get away from that word now. But uh, anyway, like I said, uh, don't be the weird kid that rats your friend out to his mom because you're being a nerd. Yeah. Don't narc on your friend because you're a nerd. Yeah. So, Pretty you much. know, just as those kids lacked friends because they pushed everybody away who made the attempt to try to make them a friend or at least include them in stuff, uh, that's exactly what these people are. They are losers. They have accomplished nothing in their life. They never will accomplish anything in their life. The only friend friends that they'll have are the ones that they pay for or pets uh, that rely on them for their survival. And these people just go through life celebrating the, you know, instances of failure in people that do actually achieve things and actually are out there taking the risks to try to push things forward. Listen, I get it. You can hate somebody for a whole bunch of reasons. And I'm not even saying that it's terrible of them to hate Elon because they disagree with his politics. Everybody gets engaged in that to one degree or another. Um, but to take every instance of failure that Elon does have and turn that into a, an odd form of success for yourself, that's just, it's just weird. By the way, from the side that does nothing. Right. Except bitch about the amazing standard of living that, living that they all enjoy thanks to the trailblazers that go out there and risk loss in order to find a path to success that provides for their ungodly standard of living that the richest kings of Europe just a couple hundred years ago couldn't possibly imagine. Those people just sit there and bitch all day long while they accomplish nothing. So great know, people. Yeah. Miserable people to be around. Living into your club. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, if you if you're not already that person, which I gather the the you know couple hundred people that uh, like subscribe and share this podcast, uh, the self selected group that you are are not in that group of people. Um, do your best to stay away from that group of people because they are miserable, miserable people, and they'll do nothing but drag you down. So, but you probably already knew that. Yeah. Exactly. So. I don't know why I'm they, telling it, you again. It, it, like the cool thing now is that they self identify. If you see him driving 10 and 2 down the road, don't hang out with him. Yeah. If you see him wearing a <laughs> mask in public, 
Don't hang out with them. Or alone in their car. Or alone in their car. <laughs> Which is still I not would, that rare these days. I would kind of say MAGA, <laughs> but you know what? I, I'm not going to say that either. Like, I feel like it's easier to talk to a MAGA hat person than it is a person with a mask on. Because you at least know where their their vector is. Like, you have yeah. to, you, you just can't shit on Trump and you can have a normal conversation. Yeah. But like, exactly. you have no idea where Ethel with the frizzy hair and the glo- and the latex gloves on her hands and the mask in her car. <laughs> no idea what's going to offend her on a, on a moment-to-moment finger basis. Finger fucking every apple in the <laughs> aisle with blatant disregard. You might say, hey, you know what? I think we could agree on a lot of issues. So like, I don't like talking to people like you. What did I do? <laughs> you comb your hair to the left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well then, you're just fucking batshit crazy and we're going to move on. That fictional person is not so fictional, and there's tons of her following the other 98%. (laughs) So, with that being said, we're moving on to the Culture Corner segment, and in today's uh, instance of the Culture Corner, what is the government trying to do other than create a culture of underachieving, which dovetails quite nicely with our meme segment. And what we're talking about in this instance is Joe Biden and the... uh, new rules passed by the Federal Housing Finance Agency, which is punishing first-time home buyers. Well, I don't even think it's first-time. I think it's anybody getting a mortgage. Um, I heard it was first-time, but they, why stop there? You know? Yeah. Why stop there? Yeah. Um, whether it's first-time or whether it's, you know, any time you apply for a mortgage for a home, uh, the Biden regime, in its infinite wisdom, has decided that if you are the person who did everything the right way, if you somehow, if you somehow managed to get through your 12 plus years of public education where they didn't teach you a dick all about personal finance, making sure you keep your debt levels low so you can keep your credit score high so you can have enough cash on hand to put a sizable down payment on a home when it was time to buy. Do your taxes. Right. You know, those basic bare minimum things that they didn't even bother to teach you in K through 12, but you somehow managed to still get it right. Well, the Biden regime now thinks that you should be punished for doing that. And what we're talking about is the Federal Housing Finance Agency's new rules that are now punishing you um, for home buyers that uh, have a credit score of 680 or higher. And I want to say that a perfect credit score is 800. I could be wrong on that, but I think a perfect credit score is 800. So 680 is up there. Like you are a pretty responsible um, manager of your own finances if you have over a 680. Um, if you have a credit score of 680 or higher, or you are able to put between 15 and 20% of a down payment down on your home, you are, you are now punished with higher interest rates for the ostensible purpose of subsidizing people who didn't follow those rules, people who have a much lower credit score and don't have the cash on hand to put down a sizable down payment. They get better rates than you do for not following the rules. You know what? I actually appreciate this for once. I really do. I do. I like the fact that you're coming out right up front and saying, hey, I'm going to fuck you really hard. (laughs) That's what your night is going to look like. Um, Because usually they're like, oh, we're going to change the tax code. We got to make sure that these corporations pay their fair share. And shouldn't we tax the people that have the most? Like, that's what we're going to do with this bill. That's what it's really all about. And then what happens? Same thing that always happens. They put in bills. They put in loopholes. That all those high-powered corporate attorneys find loopholes within. Those corporations don't pay any more money. And the common person ends up paying more money in their taxes. Thusly, it's harder for them to get ahead. Thusly, it's harder for them to improve their quality of life. But they have to work harder to do it now because they did what? Oh, that's right. They printed off 40% of the money that's ever existed. Not too many... Uh, years ago, and now the dollar is plummeting in value, and every chance they can, they could plummet the dollar a little bit further, but at least this time, Dane, they're coming out and telling you exactly what they're about to do. We're going to fuck you over for doing the right thing. That's like if a teacher came out and said, all right, here's your A, Johnny. You did great. You studied hard. You took good notes. You showed up to every class. Good job, Johnny. We're going to go back to Johnny. And we're going to be 
we're going to say, hey, you did a great job. But that little booger eater behind you that's been yeah, blowing... the guy that we talked about in the meme section. Yeah, yeah that, guy. that little guy that's been blowing spitballs in the back of your head not and uh, drawing pictures of dicks in his uh, textbook. He got an F. So what are we going to do here, Johnny? Because I can't have that on my record. It's going to make me look bad. You've got enough. You've got enough grade point average. You can take this hit. So we're going to drop that A down to a C, and we're going to give little Timmy over there, the spitball boy, uh, we're going to give him a C from your lack. We're going to even it out. Because you're smart. You'll get there eventually. You just got to give a little more now. And then when you get home, you have to explain to your parents why you have a straight C's when you've been getting A's on all your tests. Oh, now you can't get into Harvard because you had to help out little uh, little Timmy that didn't want to help himself. Does that yeah. sound fair to you? That doesn't even sound like communism, for Christ's sake. That doesn't even sound like socialism. That sounds yeah. like just like an a, a intentional glass ceiling. Yeah. It's, it's creating a society of underachievers because... And, and again, we talk about this all the time in terms of the growth of the welfare state, right? What does the government love more than anything? It is a dependent citizenry. Because if the citizenry are dependent upon the government for their mere survival, then the government have, has as much power as it will ever need. Because as soon as you pipe up and say, hey, government, I don't think you should be doing X, Y, or Z, they just turn off the nozzle to whatever it is they're helping you with, whether it be the roof over your head, the food on your table, the job that you have, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's what they love is a dependent citizenry. So let's discourage anybody from doing everything the right way. And what's another thing we always talk about on this podcast is about incentives and that with human beings being rational actors, you need to align the incentives in such a way that in, that encourage human beings to make the correct decision, not only for themselves so that they can be self-sufficient and not dependent upon others to carry their weight for them, but also so that maybe they'll have a little bit of surplus to voluntarily help out those who can't help themselves, you know, when and if that situation arises. But the government wants to completely level the playing field uh, uh, and, and they'll, they'll say, this is for, like, again, they will stand up in front of a podium and defend this all day long and say, no, we're just trying to help those other home buyers who didn't follow the rules, who did not manage money properly, who didn't save for the down payment. We're trying to help them get in a home because the reason why you as the responsible person need to pay a higher rate is because that surplus that you're paying in that higher rate, which you can handle, you saved your money and manage and, and manage your finances appropriately. So you can take the hit. And we're going to use that to subsidize them to get a lower interest rate. Does any does do you people not remember? And I'm talking to the the geniuses that form this kind of stuff. Do you not remember 2008? Do you not remember the subprime loan crisis that that fed into that? The fact that when you give everybody a chance, no matter how irresponsible they are with money, then shocker, they might default as soon as things aren't aren't all sun, sunshine and roses. Dan, I think they do. That's they they want to create the situation again, again by misaligning the incentives. It seems like they want us to bear the burden, though. Of it course. seems like they want us to make up. They want us to take the hit for the big banks that keep giving loans to people that can't. Because it's always our fault. Anyway. Of course. And if it's not our fault, they'll make sure the system is rigged in such a way there, to be our fault. I was sitting there thinking, like, if you're responsible, if you take care of yourself, if you do yada, 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 you should be able to buy that nice little nest egg home. Because that's what you worked for. it. And the place that you're referring to, those people that didn't take care of themselves financially, that maybe outbred themselves, had a couple of kids, can't support it, did some pretty, you know reckless things with their some future poor life choices. Correct. Let's call it that. There's a place for those people and it's called a trailer park. <laughs> you buy that because you can afford it and then you pay the follow me here, Dane. Follow me here. You pay the rent each month. What does that do? It builds up equity in the house or the trailer park. You pay a mortgage each month. You're saying they're going to own their trailer. Right. Okay, right, mortgage. Right, yeah. Sorry, semantics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um Semantics are important, I understand. Uh, they pay the mortgage every month, but when they do that, what, is, what also happens? When they're paying their bills on time? They start to build <gasps> credit. Whoa, what a weird fucking thing. <laughs> so they, they have to go back and say, hey, I made some mistakes. I have to start here. It's not where I want to be. 
Not where I wanted to start, but I can still Correct. end up in a better and place. And eventually I can work my way out of here by making the right choices now. What a weird concept, but no. Yeah. The government has a better idea. The government is going to get you strapped into a house that you can't possibly afford because you don't have the salary to justify it. And who's going to buy that back, by the way? That house that you can't pay for. Yeah. The bank's going to get it on the cheap. Oh. Yeah. And then they're going to come along and sell it to me at a, or David at a higher interest rate because we managed our finances a little bit better and saved a little bit more money. Than so they, they, what they're do they call winning that? either way. From the movie you quoted er earlier, uh, Double Bubble. Yeah. They want a little double bubble. Yeah. They want a double take. Ugh. Exactly. Excellent. And, you know, just chalk this up before we move on to the next segment. This is another entry into the age old question stupid or evil? Right? Because think of the timing of the genius of this plan from the movers and shakers in the Biden regime that are responsible for it. After about 18 months of rapidly rising interest rates, because they had to tamp down inflation that they caused. Right, Those rising interest rates from the Federal Reserve have made mortgage interest rates also go through the roof, which has tamped down, you know, thrown a, a damp cloth on the, on the housing market already. Right, Buyers are discouraged from buying when interest rates are going through the roof. So they created a problem in inflation. The solution to that problem has created another problem in the housing market. And then right at the time that that's basically at its peak, when inflation finally starts to come back down, what do they do? They throw another, you know, damp cloth on the fire and say, now we're going to make it even harder for all of you that were responsible throughout this whole storm and weathered it that we created. We're going to make it even harder for you to buy You know buy what they used home. to call us? Essential. Yeah. <laughs> they used to call us essential. Right. And they, and, but don't forget, they used to call nurses heroes. Yeah. Until all of a sudden they didn't want to take a <clears throat> a thingy. And a then, thing that, and then now they're all expensive. And then now they're all yeah. you know, terrible things. So like, are they stupid and at doing it right at this exact time? Or is it intentionally or is it intentional and evil in the sense that they all want to make us dependent upon them if we ever want to have a chance of getting out of the rat race or you know, not even saying that buying a home would get you out of the rat race, but it's, it's, uh, you know, it's at least one step in the right direction. I've got a, I've got a question. That their timing is highly sum, suspect. Sums this one up and then moves us on to the next one. If this is the in crowd, if you want to be cool with your liberal, your democratic, whatever people, the in crowd is officially now these kinds of policies purple-haired people screaming at other people and shouting them down, and whoever doesn't agree with you is immediately villainized, and whoever critically thinks is cast out and torn asunder. Is that the crowd you want to be? And that leads us in, or is that the crowd you want to be in or linked in with, to mention another, is that even a social media platform anymore, or is it just dead? No, LinkedIn's a thing. LinkedIn's a, okay. I hardly do anything with mine, but it's a thing. Yeah, I, I don't even know. I didn't even know I was on it. I keep getting emails from it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that moves us on to Epstein didn't kill himself. And that's the Trudeau and Fauci. Do the
Well, we are the swamis. <laughs> Anywho, Dan, where can they find this illustrious podcast on? They can find episode. episode 143 at wmdpodcast.com backslash 143. They can get the audio only on any podcast catcher, you know, um, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, you name it. Uh, just search Weapons of Meme Destruction. Look for episode 143. They can get the video on YouTube, Rumble, uh, and Odyssey. I believe we said a little bit too much also about COVID in the Tucker segment. So we'll block out both uh, oh, Epstein and shit. the main on YouTube. Uh, but you can, for you YouTube listeners, you were probably, I don't know if you stuck around uh, after after you've just been blanked out for two segments, but go to Rumble, go to Odyssey. You'll be able to see the full episode in all of its glory uh, if you're a video person. And then you can also link up with us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook only members page, $5 a month. Go to the website, wdpodcast.com, support our work tab, show you how to get in there. Um, and also try bell and float. Um, but with that being said, the number one place to go is go to that website, click on the main homepage, the join the, the, the email list. That's the, the number one place to always stay in contact with the show. Uh, but with that being said, we will see you next week on uh, episode 144. And hopefully the NFL draft is going swimmingly for our Go Broncos. And until then... Don't have high hopes, but hopefully it does. Thanks, Russ. Let's <laughs> ride. Anyway, more importantly, guys, stay safe and stay free.